Okay, welcome back. Um, so I'm guessing uh, the people watching this video tutorial are the ones who actually want to know uh, deep knowledge about the XML HTTP request. So let's get started, shall we? So first thing that we need is um, one is a JavaScript file, two is a, um, a PHP file on your server. Okay, and obviously three, you need a server that runs a server-side program language such as PHP. Um, I'm running an Apache server here uh, on a Linux distribution of CentOS um, with all standard um, default settings and so on. But this is not going to be relevant um, for now. Okay, so I've got a simple uh, index.html file or index.php file, sorry, um, with this kind of um, form on, on there. Okay, there's actually no HTML form tag on here. It's just um, two input boxes. One of um, have the ID of um, first underscore name. The second one have the ID of surname. And then the text area has the ID of uh, response text with the text being a capital T. Um, this is an input type button uh, with the ID of call underscore back underscore btn. Okay, this is what we're going to be working with. Um, now in this first tutorial, or in the second tutorial of this, but this tutorial right here, we're not actually going to be sending any data about using these elements here. We're going to set up our uh, XML HTTP um, function, or AJAX function first of all, um, to work a little bit more systematically and have a little bit of strength in it. So let's um, crack on, and then I've got this script.js. And the first function which we're going to write is our um, is our we're going to call the function uh, let's call it XML or we call it XHR objects, okay? Okay, and within inside of this, uh, basically we're going to we're going to make uh, a kind of so the XHR stands for XML HTTP request okay object so within this yeah we're going to make a couple of methods built-in methods to this one function um, and a little bit of um, functionality um, for you to use in the future okay so the first thing that we have to do is check for um, browser compatibility okay now um, because of the likes of Internet Explorer 9 and 10 and the, the versions of Firefox and Chrome and so on pretty much all of them support the same thing although although there are some old browsers out there some companies using some old browsers like IE6, IE7, IE8 now Microsoft did do a sweep of um, updating all the um, Internet Explorer 6 and 7s to 8 and to 9 um, but there's probably some people out there that don't use Windows Update and stuff so do you want to ignore these people or do you want to have these people as customers with your website working properly? It's a couple of lines of text just to make sure it works properly. Um, so what we have to do first of all is the main um, the main people that have got uh, computers that actually work properly or uh, with browsers are actually half decent. We just need to check whether the um, the, the window.xml uh, HTTP request is there. Okay, And so this will cover basically um, all current uh, browsers okay and what we want to do is we want to um, set with inside set inside here is our um, XHR this is actually going to be our um, XML HTTP request objects internally okay so that we want to then set this one and we want to say XHR equals new XML HTTP uh, request. Okay, it doesn't take any arguments. Um, so that's that bit done. Now, then we want to say uh, else if. Um, no, we don't want to say else if. We just want to say else, and we're just going to use um, the standard one here of new active x object and with inside of here it takes then an argument of Microsoft dot X whoops capital letters XML HTTP that's it okay you need to make sure you type them in in capital letters as well okay so once we've got our um, our XHR our XML HTTP request um, we next uh, want to just make a couple of handlers okay so one here we're going to say on um, error equals then function and for the time being we're not actually going to do anything with it so we could actually just place that in one line just like that 
and then we're going to do uh, another one here and we're going to say success and then and then another one here and just say um, and starts okay these these are just going to be uh, used um, if or when we need them okay so um, when someone needs a, a XML HTTP request object then they're going to call this function and we're going to return this um, XHR okay so return XHR is going to give the, the um, yeah, it's going to return the actual XML HTTP object and we're setting these as functions um, on this one variable okay so they can be used later okay so now um, now that we've done this we now need to actually um, potentially use it now um, what we do want to do is basically um, give give uh, users a way or give yourself a way as such um, to be able to use it in the simplest form so we're going to first of all say uh, window whoops okay uh, window dot on load to attach the handler first of all okay and the handler which we're going to attach it to is then um, to this button so we can actually see it working for the time being and um, we're then going to attach an event handler to here okay onto this one button here all right so let's just use the um, document dot uh, get element by id and this is called call underscore back underscore btn and we're going to say on click equals function okay now if you are using chrome okay then you're going to need to change that to click rather than on click okay because chrome doesn't support the on click okay now within inside of here we're going to then say var xhr okay equals new xhr object okay which is then from this Okay, this is an internal um, variable. It's only available within the scope of this one um, function. Therefore, this isn't going to um, this isn't going to mess it up because we use the var keyword. Okay, so var is giving us our, our new um, XML HTTP request uh, object. Now, let's just um, just to check to see that we're all um, okay on this. So we're going to say console um, dot log xhr. Okay, so let's come to here. Let's refresh this and we press F12 to see um, using Firebug click the button and as you can see we get our uh, XML HTTP request um, sent back fine okay so now the next thing that we have to have is um, a PHP file on our server now we're going to have an ajax.php on exactly the same uh, level as the index.php file okay and I've got it open here and we're simply just going to say uh, the time is Okay, and we're going to say uh, dates, and then um, let's do it D M Y and H I S. Whoops, no, just like that. Okay, and because I've got a setting on my server, local server, just need to do that to stop any output of telling me the current date, time, whatever it is. Okay, so let's leave that as that. That's not important for now. Okay, so now um, that we know that we've got an XML HTTP request, um, we can delete this. So we just want to set a couple of things up. Now, um, the first thing that we need to set up is, or to say, is the open part of it. Now, we're going to do a post request uh, on this, and the file that we're going to go back to is then ajax.php. And we want this asynchronously, okay? If you put it as false, then it's not going to be asynchronously, it's just going to be synchronously. And that's kind of defeats the object because we want this to run in the background and let everything else on the page um, run in parallel, okay? So by putting this as false, then nothing else on the web page is going to work until this one request is finished, okay? Or none of your other JavaScript is going to work until this one request is finished. And that defeats the object of actually having an asynchronous callback, okay? Okay, the next thing, because this is a um, a post request, we need to say um, set um, request header. Okay, and in this we're going to say content type, because we need to tell the server um, of what type the, the, the form data is. And by this we need to say application forward slash dash www dash form dash and URL encoded. 
Now I always write this down wrong every single time. This time I've written it down right because I wrote it down on a piece of paper next to me. Um, okay, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to do uh, XHR set request header, and this one's going to be then contents uh, length, and this is going to be equal to uh, parameters dot length, which we're going to write in just a second. Okay, now the parameters which we're going to send back is obviously the post. Um, parameters which we're going to um, receive on the server side. Okay, now inside of here, this is just a standard um, uh, name value pair separated by ampersands, um, the way that you would get them in in the post uh, request. Okay, and in this we're going to say first name equals David, and then ampersand uh, surname equals Thorn. We're going to send nothing ba further um, back than that. Okay, but we we need to send back the parameter. Um, we need to send back the content length, so the server knows how much data um, it needs to read. Okay. Now, once we've done this, we then need to say on ready states change. This is um, we're going to explain this uh, shortly. This is a function that we, oh, where have I got an error here? Did I just do that for some reason? That's not good, is it? Let's put that in there. Let's try this again, shall we? Okay, there we go. It's just NetBeans tells you whether there's errors by putting these curly braces in it in completely the wrong place. So let's do that again. That's better. Okay, so on ready state change is there's five states um, of the XML HTTP request. Okay, there's a zero, one, two, three, and four. Now these are listed here. I'm going to go through that shortly, um, but this is basically um, is going to um, it's going to flick through each state. Every single time the state changes, um, it's going to call this one function. Now, this is the most important thing that we need um, to do. Now, for the time being, um, we're just going to say, um, so XHR is the object, and we're then just going to say um, status. Oh, no, we want, um, sorry, ready state to explain this. So we're just going to log, um, put this onto the log of the ready state. Okay, it's just going to be a number zero, one, two, three, or four. Okay, and uh, then once we've done this, we then need to say um, basically then the send. Okay, now using the the get method, you would just put null in this, but because we're sending via the post request, uh, then we need to put the parameters um, in, in here. So this is where we're going to send it. Okay, so that's all pretty much all we need to do. Um, for now. Now these are on error, on start and success. Um, we're going to use a little bit later but we just write them for now um, so they're done. So let's save this. Um, let's just let the browser give us some errors if we've done it wrong and send it and as you can see it's sent um, perfectly fine. Um, we've got the request went went. Okay so um, just a quick explanation before I finish this one tutorial ready to move on to the next one. Okay you can see here that the post request went back to tutorials.local which is the domain and then ajax.php. We got then a, a status of 200, status text of OK and it took 14 milliseconds and the different um, ready states of one, two, three and four as it went through the different ready states. I'm going to explain all this information in the next video tutorial. Okay, by the way, if this is the first time you've been introduced to Java um, to um, Ajax, okay, there's a lot more important information to understand in the next video tutorial. Okay, so watch the next one. Okay, y otherwise, if you don't know a few of the next things, you're possibly going to bang your head against the wall um, a whole lot if you don't know these things. Okay, okay, so right, I'll see you in the next um, video tutorial then. Yep, okay, bye.